The aim of this video is to give you an understanding of the external auditor's role. The key areas to cover are understanding what is an audit, the expectation gap, the audit process and the pros and cons of an external audit. An organisation has shareholders who invest money into the company, the directors who are then responsible for looking after that investment and reporting on how the company is performing, and the financial statements which are prepared by the directors so the shareholders can see how their investment is doing as well as other users to review for their own decisions. In order for the shareholders to feel reassured that the information they review in the financial statements is prepared properly, it is reviewed by an independent party on their behalf. The independent party is the external auditor. Our external auditor's objective is to review the financial statements and to form an independent opinion. The opinion has specific wording and the auditor must communicate whether the financial statements are true and fair and properly prepared. This opinion is stated in the audit report. This is prepared by the auditors once all audit work is completed and included within the financial statements when presented. To define the term true and fair, we must first understand that the auditor cannot say the financial statements are accurate. The reason for this is that the external auditor does not review every single transaction in the financial statements nor do they spend every day at the client's offices and production site observing every single process being carried out. The time the auditor has to complete an external audit means they should take a snapshot of the client's transactions and systems and controls. It is from this snapshot that they form an overall opinion on the financial statements. We say that the auditor reviews the financial statements on a sample basis as they select samples of transactions to review rather than test them all. Therefore, when an auditor states that the financial statements are true and fair, they are saying that they are factual, they agree with the underlying records, clear, unbiased and generally free from material misstatements. Material misstatements are errors within the financial statements that, if not corrected, could influence the decisions made on the information given. It is the auditor's role to identify any material misstatements within the financial statements so that they can be corrected by the client before the accounts are published. In terms of reporting on whether the financial statements are properly prepared, they are saying they are prepared in accordance with the applicable reporting framework. The audit report prepared by the auditor will therefore state whether the financial statements are true and fair and properly prepared. There is a misconception of the role of an external auditor. Many users of the financial statements believe the auditors test all transactions and balances. In fact, they test transactions on a sample basis. They believe that auditors should detect all fraud and error when in fact it is the auditor's responsibility to report on whether the financial statements are free from material misstatements, whether caused by fraud and error. And many believe it is the responsibility of the auditors to prepare the financial statements. This responsibility always lies with the directors of the company, not the auditors. This is known as the expectation gap. Ideally, auditors wish to reduce this gap as much as possible to ensure everyone understands the role of the auditor. For the auditor to form an independent opinion on the financial statements, there will be considerable time spent with the client and reviewing the books and records. To ensure the work is carried out properly, the audit has a standard structure. This audit process can be outlined as follows. Step 1. Acceptance the auditors must consider before they begin the audit work whether they want to accept a new client or continue the audit for an existing one. They should identify if there are any factors which could cause the auditors problems when working with the client. Step 2. Engagement. If they are happy to continue the external audit work, they will need to ensure an agreement is in place between the client and the auditor. This is known as the engagement letter. Step 3. The plan. Once the agreement is in place, the auditor must then carefully plan the audit and identify any risks and other issues that need to be managed during the audit. Step 4. 
assess controls and systems. The auditor must then review the systems and control procedures at the client. The aim here is to identify whether they have strong controls or poor controls. This helps decide how reliable the financial statements may be and the amount of work the auditor should carry out on transactions and balances. Step 5. Substantive testing. This is the testing stage where the auditor performs audit procedures on transactions and balances within the financial statements to identify potential misstatements. Step 6. Completion and review. At this stage, the audit manager will review the evidence collected and the work completed to ensure it is enough to form an opinion. Step 7. The audit report. Finally, the audit partner responsible for the audit will review the audit work and the financial statements and form an opinion on whether the financial statements are true and fair and properly prepared or not. We must understand what happens at each stage of the audit process to fully appreciate the external auditor and the opinion that is formed on the financial statements. External audits are often not viewed fondly by many. The negativity arises for many reasons, but believe it or not there are many benefits for having an external audit. Here I'm going to identify some of the pros and cons of an external audit to give the argument balance. The pros. By having an independent team review the financial statements, it means they are likely to spot any material misstatements, therefore detecting fraud and error. It enhances the credibility of the financial statements, so users of the information can trust what is given to help make decisions, for example if looking to give finance for the client. It improves the quality and reliability of the information, which then improves shareholder confidence and the company reputation. Auditors can recommend improvements to systems and controls based on their experiences with similar clients. And their independent advice can also help resolve disputes between management and assist in better decision making from the management team. The cons. They do not test every transaction as they have to use a sample basis. So there could be misstatements in transactions that have not been seen by the auditor. Financial statements include estimates which are difficult to audit as they are subjective and hard to prove. The auditors may have to rely on evidence provided by the client management for some areas if external evidence cannot be obtained. Systems and controls have their own limitations and the auditors rely on some information provided by these systems. Therefore, to summarise, an external audit is an independent review of the financial statements. There are three parties involved, the user of the financial statements, for example the shareholder, the provider of the financial information, the directors, and the external auditor performing an independent review. Auditors form an independent opinion on the financial statements and state whether the financial statements are true and fair and properly prepared. Auditors follow a standard process during the audit to ensure they form the correct opinion. An external audit has limitations, but they enhance the credibility of the financial statements and help improve confidence in the client's operations. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching.